Well, I know Dan didn't want to say it, but welcome to the best stage at Config. I'm so glad that you're all here, and also everyone at home watching us. Uh, thanks for joining in. Um, before we get started, I do want to do a little shout out to my colleague, Dimitri. He's our principal engineer at Booking.com. He was actually supposed to give this talk, but unfortunately, due to visa issues, he couldn't be here. So I am actually replacing him. I am Pim Strangers. I'm the senior designer at the Booking Design System team. Um, but luckily, to cover all the technical details, we have Olena. Hello, everyone. My name is Olena. I'm senior software engineer in design system team at Booking.com. And before we start talking about design system adoption, let's talk a bit about Booking.com and our design system team. Life is made of experiences. And at Booking.com, our mission is to make it easier for everyone to experience the world. And following this mission, we became the leading travel platform used by millions of people every day. We support 45 languages and operate in more than 220 countries and territories. We're well known for accommodations, but our scope goes beyond that. We provide travelers with car rentals, taxis, attractions, and flights. And there is really big team behind all these products. Our technical department consists of more than 150 product teams, including more than 200 de uh, designers. And we have only one design system. It's called BUI from Booking User Interface. It serves all these teams and supports five platforms, including web, mobile apps, and design. In design system team, our mission is to empower product teams to build high-quality user experiences faster. And the key to that is to make sure that design system is properly adopted on the product and product teams know how to use it. To achieve this, we develop and maintain six major areas. Foundations, component libraries, design assets, documentation, educational materials, and tooling. And adoption of such massive system is really hard. You click. Yes, so as we've all been busy building the best design system pos possible over the last years, we now have to actually get our users to use the design system. But actually, adoption can be quite hard. But instead of focusing on why adoption is hard, I want to talk to you about how we solved it at Booking.com, or how you can actually solve it in your environment. But before diving in there, I want to take you six and a half years uh, back when we first created the design system at Booking.com. It was 2018, and we got designers from all across the company together to define our first components and the first look and feel for our design system. And to prove to all of you I'm not just some random stranger uh, standing here today, this is actually me in the back on the left. You can obviously recognize me by the back of my head. Um, and to be honest, I had no clue what I, what I was doing back then. I just joined the company and I didn't even know what a design system was. I didn't even know anything about components. I think they put me in charge for like the divider component, which is literally just a straight line. <laughs> it didn't have any properties, but still, I was super excited for it. Like I was building something that was gonna be used by everyone throughout the company. So as you can imagine, we released the first design system and everyone was excited. Everyone was hyped to start using our first components. Um, we didn't have any issues with adoption whatsoever. But fast forward, from, fast forward five years from here, and our updates started to look like this. Like just three people liking a button update, probably one of them is me included. And as design system nerd, like such updates like this where we introduce a new button, we were super excited about it, but still no one actually amongst our users um, get engaged with such updates. So, we started to face the issue, um, struggling with design system adoption. But instead of focusing on this, we tried to shift our mindset and actually think, how can we get people to love our design system? How can we get them excited to actually use our design system and our components? How can we get our users addicted to it? And we learned there are two main pillars to this. The first is product trust, 
which is really around establishing a good and healthy relationship with your users. And the other one is about technical integrations, um, creating, making it easier for your de developers and designers to use your design system uh, efficiently. Now, how do we actually establish product trust? There are four, as we learned, four key elements to this. And the first is by focusing on a clear designer and developer experience. Now, components are the bread and butter of every design system. What do all components have in, pro in common? It's that they all contain of properties. Even the divider component that we use nowadays contains a property. It can also be vertical now. Um, but what you want with your properties, not only them being consistent in terms of naming, you also want them to be consistent throughout both design and development. And in order to achieve this at Booking.com, we created the design API, which acts as a central source of truth for all our components used across all platforms. Um, you want your components to be built in a way that they feel natural to your designers, that they don't need to think about or need to question what they will do when they trigger them. It's like good design. You want them to be invisible. Good design is invisible. Um, and a good example of this is um, pretty straightforward, but in, when you're using an icon in a button and you're using an icon in an input text field, make sure that that property is consistently named throughout your system. So in our case, it's called a start icon in buttons, it's called a start icon in input text fields. And the same can be said for all other properties like sizes, um, et cetera. Another thing we often do as design system teams, we try to step into the shoes of product teams. We try to cater to all their needs, needs, which actually leads to us building components which are way too opinionated. We try to build cards like this, where we feel like, okay, this is what they can use right out of the box, but product teams will evolve way faster than we can support as a design system, meaning that they will come with requests, like adding a button on the top left to close it, add a badge here, add a button there, and that will actually make you as a design system team a bottleneck. Instead, you want to keep your components flexible by either providing containers or slots um, that are more generic that, so that product teams themselves can actually um, um, use them in the way they need. But in order not to let your product become one wild west, you do need to have some sort of gatekeeping mechanism in place. And for this, we really focus on strict guidelines, having a mechanism in place to always hold your users against when they're using your design system. And speaking about guidelines, good documentation, like, um, like proper documentation is important and therefore you have to focus on documentation quality. We did a study in our design system team this year where we tried to quantify the efficiency of our design system by um, having designers and developers build products with and without a design system. And the results we found were quite amazing. We saw an increase of over 24% in terms of efficiency amongst design, and even up to 100% um, amongst iOS developers. And this is not even taking quality into account. But what we also learned with this study is that our developers and designers spend a lot of their valuable time when they're using the design system in documentation. So by focusing on good documentation quality, like discoverability, helping your users to find what they need um, by cross-linking everything, providing good search, um, by providing clear visual examples from real product use cases, and by adding accessibility guidelines right within your product, you can leverage this impact and increase these numbers even further. Now, any good design system can still fail. Like, as a design system team, you're always evolving. You continuously um, break components. There's no way around that. But what you don't want is your updates that start to look like this, where you're introducing random breaking changes, having users question what's going on, like, hey, do I need to update 50 components again? Instead, you want to establish a stable release cycle. Now, this is dependent on your organization, but you have to basically find a cadence that works for you um, in order to have product teams know when they need to prepare for updating to a new uh, version. At Booking, we have uh, major releases once a year, so we only introduce breaking changes once a year. And on top of that, we have 
uh, one month in advance where they can um, where they can test around and play around with these new component updates. On top of that, we also focus on building automated migration scripts, which basically means that we try to automate as much as possible um, the migration to a new version for uh, product teams. Uh, a good example of that uh, for designers, given we're at config after all, uh, is when Figma released variables uh, for border radius, for spacing. We wanted our designers to migrate and use uh, spacing variables uh, everywhere. But instead of having them hard, um, update all their hard-coded values one by one, we created a feature within our dedicated plugin to do it automatically. Now, as in any good relationship, clear communication is key. You always want to make sure that your uh, users are up to date with what's going on. If it's in education, amongst tooling, the design system itself, with, for example, change logs, you always want to communicate to your users. And you, again, have to find your right pace for this and the right cadence that fits your style. But at Booking, we have monthly updates where we scope out um, per role, basically, what is important to them. So designers get design-related updates, developers get developer-related updates. Now, as you start out as a single instance within an organization, almost living within your own bubble, by building this product trust, you start to notice that there are people popping up throughout the company who show extra engagement with your design system. Like they start to uh, raise bug requests, they start to be active in support channels, uh, they even might start to contribute to your design system. And those are the people you actually want to engage more and more with as we like to call them, the junkies of your design system, because they are the people who can leverage the impact of your design system across the whole company. And that's really for product trust. But what about creating smart technical integration that can help making the developer experience even smoother? Olena's going to tell you all about that. Thanks. So, uh, as Pim mentioned, in addition to building community trust, our second focus is to provide teams with robust technical integrations. These integrations ensure seamless adoption of the design system on the product and minimal effort when you implement new features. Let's dive into a real-life example from our experience to see how this works in practice. As design system team launches component library, the story just begins. Uh, product teams start to use these components and new requests appears. For example, they may need to use icons with your components. So we need to introduce the new part of the system, expand the scope, and think about how this part will work with existing parts. So it becomes more clear that design system is not just about components. Getting back to our example. So product teams highlighted need for a set of icons how we can address this request. Actually, there are two approaches, short-term and long-term. For the first one, just to make icons available on the product, you need to open your Figma file, export SVG, and add to code. It's fast, it's straightforward, and it could be a really first, first step. Only until the number of icons exceeds 100. Now it's not so easy to find, update, or maintain them. So we need to come up with more scalable and future-proof solution. In design system team, we build such solution. It includes several tools and process around working with icons. Let's take a look. First, we were thinking about where these icons should be stored. Icons start their journey in Figma file, so Figma became this first area we need to support. So we created Figma library, centralized place to store all these icons and publish them for all designers within the org. In addition to Figma library, we build tool for developers so they can easily find which icons available on the product and how they can use it. Uh, in this tool, we provide real-life code snippets for all platforms we support and usage guidelines. And talking about guidelines, as a design system team, you don't want to be responsible for creating all these icons by yourself. Instead, it would be nice to allow other teams to contribute to your library. So we really invest in creating detailed contribution guidelines to educate product teams how to do this. 
If we allow other teams to contribute to our library, how we can be sure that what they add is actually matching the tone of voice, the quality, and doesn't contain any bugs? So we implemented a set of scripts to validate icons, like on multiple aspects. For example, duplicates, hard-coded colors, hard-coded sizes, any kind of other issues. After validation, we minimize them and prepare them for release. And release itself also completely automated process. We use continuous deployment to publish all these icons uh, as a separate packages for all platforms we support as one step. So we created Figma library with all these icons. We created service with files and code, how we can connect these two and make sure that they in sync. Thanks to Figma API, in our BI plugin, we were able to implement features to work with icons. For example, preview the full catalog, preview the full information about the icons and metadata, uh, add them to design file, or swap. And as I mentioned, sync feature, we actually do sync for our um, Figma library. And uh, this is internal feature. It's available only for designers in design system team. But we consider ourselves also as users of the design system. That's why we use the same tooling. Our designers, they don't need to install any other Figma plugins to work with these extra features. No, they just run the same PI plugin that already received its update. So as you see from this example, it's not just about SVG files. To implement this uh, request, we came up to the need for a system and process to work with icons. And this process spans across multiple areas. So our key learning from this and our advice is when you try to implement something new, try to think about areas you need to support first and implement integrations with these areas instead of focusing on implement just specific feature. That way, you won't need to fight for adoption of each new release. And when new feature request appears, for example, introduce illustrations, we already have this icon pass. We can reuse it. We won't need to build everything from scratch. After implementation, adoption is going to be fairly easy. Products already use your Figma library. Plugins already installed. Tools and packages already available. So the new feature will simply become a part of this system. With automations and migrations in place, work happening in the background. Product design files and code become addicted to your system without requiring you for any manual input. Yeah, so of course, this is not the holy grail to automatically solve adoption. Like, of course, there's education, there's providing good support to your users. But try to see which of these elements within product trust and which technical integrations you can implement in your environment to also make your users addicted so adoption will start happening behind the scenes. And maybe even you can also get your users addicted to your design system. Thank you.